I'm not usually the person to get microphones that are shiny. But in this case, it kind of caught my eye. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel. I'm Justin, and in this video, we're going to be covering the Sterling SP150. 150. And really seeing if this budget, really budget microphone is any good. I haven't really expanded my condenser microphone genre or type for a long time. The Lewitt was the last one that I got, and I wasn't a huge fan of it. It was a little too bright for my taste, but this one might catch people's eye, not only because of the fact that it's it looks pretty cool, that really dark blue and black look and i really love the way this thing looks it's got like kind of a vintage look but it's not like vintage in it's kind of like a vintage but it's futuristic if that makes any sense but regardless this build is definitely pretty sturdy when i saw it and i saw it at the on as an ad, I got it on sale. I got the bundle be with this and the 130. So that's the pencil condenser microphone, small diaphragm condenser microphone that is bundled with this. And I got it on sale. So that's the reason why I got it and the reason why I'm covering it. So this body was deceiving. Usually when you see something like this, oh, it's fancy and it's cheap. Usually with this, you kind of get a nice look, but a rough build. But just holding it, excuse the handling noise, but that's actually a good example. I have a uh, hard mount on here, the one that comes with it. I don't have the shock mount, which maybe it fits the Boeing or the Boson one. The actual shock mount that you can buy for it, the Sterling brand one, it's a little too expensive for my taste. But the Boson one, definitely a good versatile um, shock mount. I don't know if it actually makes much of a difference in certain microphones, but I did do a video on it, so go check out the different shock mounts that are out there, at least the ones that I bought. So back to the Sterling SP150. Kind of hard to remember, but it's not a brand that I'm used to. And to be honest, it isn't much different than microphones that I've seen under that $200 mark. This one right here is right around that $100 mark, maybe a little less depending on when you get it. The only place that I've seen this microphone is Musician's Friend, and it could be an exclusive thing for them. It might be on other websites. I don't know for sure. Uh, I haven't checked in a while. I actually knew at one point, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's just Musician's Friend. But if it is somewhere else, let me know down in the comments, or maybe future me just edited saying, no, it's somewhere else, dummy. So that kind of stuff. Um... I don't know for sure if this is going to be a go-to for some people, but you guys let me know how it sounds in my studio here. Basically a 12 by 8 room roughly, and there's a lot of stuff in the room, so not too, not that much reflection. I also have the, the booth walls in the air, so it kind of suppresses some of that uh, reverberation back if there is any. Uh, so keep that all in mind. Mini fridge going on right now, and... Sometimes the computer is on, the fans on my computer, the computer's on my fan, the fans on my computer goes off, but I'm leaving all that in and I'm not really going to treat it with kids gloves because I really want to give a real world experience with these microphones. The booth is kind of controlled, but it's not perfect, but maybe one day I could actually use a or build a good booth. So without any further ado, here are the specs and the tech that goes into this. And then we're going to do a noise test and off axis. All right, so that was the noise test, mini fridge, fans on the computer dehumidifier in the other room i put up some more moving blankets in the doorway here so maybe i'll do a video on it if in the future tests like these next couple of videos this video and the comparison to the at 2020 if i notice a big difference i'm definitely going to consider doing a video showing the difference between 
before and after the moving blankets being put in because moving blankets are relatively cheap uh, especially when you compare it to sound blankets which the ones that I have here weren't too expensive but they can get a little pricey especially compared to uh, moving blankets which I double up I fold them in half and I use them as walls that's what I used to use for the booth and I kind of use it still now for the booth because it's basically three quarters of the studio just a little bigger so I've been talking about three four inches away from the microphone with the pop filter right in front and we'll do plosive tests in the booth uh mini fridge is off now just so you know and now we're gonna back up all right now about a foot maybe two feet away from the front of the microphone this is a cardioid polar pattern so keep that in mind when you're listening to the off-axis rejection uh that basically means heart shape when you put it on top there's basically a heart shape with the front being like this and the other and being like tapered off uh rejection in the back kind of rejection on the sides i say rejection because it's not complete muting of the other areas around the microphone which let's get into all right 90 degree test about foot and a half two feet away from the side of the microphone stage left over here and this is what it's going to sound like now about two feet away on the opposite side stage right and this was going to sound like on the 90 degree on the sterling sp 150 and lastly, 180 degrees, about like three, four feet away. This is what it's going to sound like with the Sterling SP-150. All right, so that was the test in the studio. I know uh, if you're a person that's been here for a while, I'm kind of changing things up. Techie Talk is basically just your spec sheet that I laid out for all of you. If you want any more information about all that stuff, just ask me down in the comments. Or if you want any tests that could reflect those tech and specs, let me know down in the comments as well. And all I ask is just be nice. That's all. So now let's go to the booth and see how this thing performs in a more controlled environment. All right, so we're in the booth right now with the Sterling SP-150. And I will say that it I, I've done a bunch of tests with this. And I've spoken into it. I've listened to it. And it's not something that I'm, I'm not in love with it. I don't hate it, but I, I just don't know what this is. I don't know where this one lands. I, I, I compared it to the, oh, well, I'm going to, I did, I recorded the videos, uh, the AT2020 and the 2035, which I'll do more tests and I'll do more comparisons eventually. But the 2020 and 2035 are definitely like on their way to being done soon keep an eye out for those but then the the lct 240 and the 4040 eventually i'm going to compare it to that to those and i feel like this microphone is just it needs some love on the back end but i'm hoping that that love on the back end is going to be enough it might not be uh, just for something for some reason it's just not grabbing me it doesn't have that oomph but you guys let me know let me know what you feel i feel like for the price that this is it's worth it but maybe with a little bit of extra money you can get a 2035 or a 2020 but those comparisons will determine if you want to get those and those will be out soon so now let's do a plosive test okay there's your plosive test simple easy you should use a pop filter, that's for sure. And now I'm going to talk without the pop filter right now, see if you notice a difference in quality. And I don't know. It has some noise to it. It has a little bit of airiness to it, which can be fixed in post, but you try to keep it as natural as you can. I just feel like this microphone, for the price, you're going to have to work on it. You're paying a lower price because it's lacking in some areas. So keep that all in mind. Uh, let's see. Is it any different? Mm, nah. This thing doesn't really change the tone. It really just avoids explosives. Now let's do a close proximity off axis. All right. 90 degree test. Close proximity about six, seven inches away on the stage right side. And this was going to sound like in the booth. Now on the other side, stage left, this is what it's going to sound like in the booth. Close proximity, about 7, 8 inches away. And this is what it sounds like 
in my little booth here, padded room. Lastly, the way that you're not supposed to speak into a microphone, but that for test's sake, this was going to sound like 180 degrees. Uh, excuse me. I'm leaving that in. All right, so 180 degrees. Uh, you could tell the logo on the front is the place that you talk, and there's a little um, cardioid polar pattern logo as well. So speak into that side. All right, let's go to the untreated room and see how this thing does in that room. All right, so untreated room, SP-150. This is what it's going to sound like in the untreated room. Eight foot by 15 feet, roughly. This is my bedroom. Area rug above a wood floor. A lot of stuff in it. It's kind of a small, well, not, it's not super small, but it is a smaller room. Uh, maybe about the same size as the studio, but not as treated, quote unquote. Uh, I could definitely say that this room has more reflections uh, than the untreated room, than the studio downstairs. Uh, so keep in mind uh, all like the stuff around here, flat ceiling, uh, like I said, area rug and the wood floor. There is a window right there. It's half covered with a uh, with drapes, but still glass is reflective as well. And yeah, so we're gonna do a distance and off-axis test now. All right, so about five-ish feet away from the SP-150 right now, talking at a normal voice, in a normal voice, on a, in a. Speaking is hard sometimes. <coughs> so that's what it's gonna sound like at a distance, and you're probably gonna hear a lot of reflections off the ceiling mainly and maybe this wall here off to the my right your left next up 90 degree test sp150 untreated room this was going to sound like uh about like two feet away ish this is what's going to sound like in the untreated room i know i keep repeating myself but i'm just trying to give enough of an audio sample for you next up 90 degrees a little further away on stage right so that's your left uh, keep in mind all the stuff in the room. I'm going to remind you because it's a good way to give an audio samples. Wood floors, rare rug, flat ceiling. Lastly, 180 degrees in the untreated room. This is what it's going to sound like with the SP-150 by Sterling. Uh, decent looking microphone. I really like the way this thing looks. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments how, this, uh, how all these tests go. Alright, back to the studio. Okay, so this mic has been an interesting listen. And as of recording this outro, I have made two comparisons and this solo video. I've compared it to the AT2020 and the 2035. Go check out those videos when they come out in the next couple weeks. I won't give my opinions on how they are compared to those but I will give you my opinion on how I felt after I listened to it in post. So here are my notes. In the studio first, I noticed it was a little bit mid forward. And that could be attributed to my nasally voice at the time. Uh, let me know now if I've cleared up a little bit. And let me know if it's different. Also, when you hear the other videos, the 2020 and the 2035 videos, I forget which one was more nasally, but one is more nasally than the other. So let me know if you notice a difference after my voice is cleared up progressively. And of course, all the outros will be in this scenario where my voice is actually decent, not as nasally, not as congested. So keep that in mind when you listen to these videos. I apologize for that, but hey, this is real world stuff. We're not trying to sugarcoat anything. Next up with the off-axis rejection and the noise. The noise wasn't that bad. Uh, the distance pretty good. 90's okay. And the 180, pretty good. So I noticed that this microphone has pretty good off-axis rejection. And as I said with those specifics, it, it was very surprising for me. I'm thinking that the sensitivity has something to do with that off axis rejection, but I don't know for sure. If you think that's the specific thing that has to do with it, 
let me know because I messed around with the gain and it might not be the sensitivity that's making it that way. It might be that it's the diaphragm is made so well or maybe even the way that it's constructed with the body could be the reason why. So let me know what you think down in the comments on that. Now when I went into the booth and I listened to that part alone, meaning just this microphone, I felt it was bland. Now, it might be a bit harsh, but at the time when I listened to it, and even today, it can come off as bland. It, maybe in, maybe one day I feel some way and another day I feel another. So in those comparisons between the AT2020 and this and the AT2035 and this, you listen to these things all the time like I do. It It's a different experience a lot of the time, every listen, which is a little annoying. But, I mean, you hear music and you hear shows and stuff differently every time. So just keep that in mind. Now, lastly, the untreated room. It sounded pretty good when it was used normally, meaning within the proximity of normal use. So like three, four inches away. And the off axis was pretty good. So what I came to understand with this microphone, it's it's great. It is a solid microphone. And I really do uh, think that people would benefit from this. And it might be my choice for someone's first condenser microphone that all being said thank you all for watching hope you enjoyed it if you liked the video please hit the like button down below It'd be greatly appreciated it helps this video helps this channel and another thing that helps this channel is commenting so if you have any questions comments or anything whatsoever about the sterling sp150 please leave them down below all i ask is you be nice and just have a nice conversation you can critique me so constructive criticism is always welcome always trying to be better but obviously just be nice and uh, if you want to join the discord that's available as well uh not many people in it but there are some people if you want to discuss this type of stuff the videos and things like that one more thing if you like my vibe around here please consider subscribing we are over 2,000 subscribers chugging along it's been kind of a tough time to upload videos because i've been busy and i'm going to be on the road so it's going to be tough again but i'm going to try my best to get at least a video up a week uh, it's probably going to end up being like one a week at least until probably March. And uh, I'm going to do my best to be a little bit better this year with my time management and everything. So that's all I got for you. Until next time, take care, and I'll see you Rebels in the next video.